nobody's home. It's weird that it looks like they're setting up for a party. Oh, of course, that's a sponsor's viewing and party. They always have them the day before an exhibit opens. Hello. Hi. I uh, was looking forward to seeing the paintings today. Yeah, me too. Guess we'll have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. Perhaps we'll see each other then. Perhaps. Till then. Bye. Thanks, dear. Taste this, please. Mmm, bourguignon is perfect. That's what I thought. What's the occasion? Michael Kagan's coming to dinner. Michael Kagan? Oh, the teacher of bullies? When he took those writing courses at the university. Michael left, went to New York for a couple of years, but now he's back. And just in the nick of time. Willie's script. Michael's the one who told Willie he ought to be a writer. He's kind of a hero to Willie. Now that the script's finished, he needs an objective opinion. Look, I read it. It's terrific, and I told him so. You're his sister. He needs a professional opinion. Michael Kagan's, to be exact. Well, let's just keep our fingers crossed that he likes it. Why don't you come over for dinner tonight? You can kill two birds with one stone. You can meet the returning hero and uh, get a good hot meal for a change. Are you free? Free as a bird. Well, then come over about 7.30. Well... Hey, Darren, in the meantime? You can leave that alone, or I'll have to send out for Chinese. Hello? Oh, hi. Your sugar, your butter. Thank you. And my treat, pistachio nuts. Mm. Michael's favorite. Oh, pistachio nut can't be all bad. Mom invited me to meet her. Great. I'd like you to meet Michael. Well, I'll see you later. Call if you need me. Okay. Okay, okay, I can take a hint. Mm. You can? <laughs> well, I can't tell you what a relief it is to have Michael coming over here tonight. Yes, you can. But you have, many times since you ran into him. Well, I want tonight to be really special. Well, honey, I'll do my part. And you do yours by getting out of here. Okay. I'll be upstairs if you need me. Willie? Don't start poking around with your script again. It's good. Michael will love it. Hi, hey, darling. Fine. Ah, thank you. All set for the big evening? All systems go. <clears throat> I wonder if Michael's changed much. Well, three years is a long time. Seems odd to me. What? What seems odd? Well, that Michael didn't call Willie when he moved back into town. If, if Willie hadn't run into him... Well, he had to start teaching right away. He didn't have an apartment. I guess I'm just old-fashioned about the way friendships are supposed to work. Give him a chance, honey. Uh, need more rice. I'll get it. Ah, good to see you, Mrs. Lawrence. Kate, it's good to see you. Come on in. Oh, a Greek bearing hors d'oeuvres. Thank you. Uh, would you like a drink? Where's the competition? Competition? The budding author. Oh, well, he'll be right down. Uh, what would you like? White wine, if you have any. Sure. Willie. Michael. <laughs> Mr. Kagan. Michael, listen, Michael. I meant to call you. It's a great delicacy. It's made from chickpeas and sesame paste. I know it looks as if it could seem on building blocks, but it tastes great. I think uh, I'll stick to these. Those were Willie's favorite, too. And mine. How about Bassing? But he. Ah, oh, yes, a Virgin Mary. Thank you. <laughs> In my day, we drank Shirley Temples. A great loss. Mr. Kagan, why is Willie letting you sit down here with us? I thought he'd have you locked up in his closet until you read a script. Buddy. Buddy, you're a smart girl. If you had something of yours you wanted me to read and you weren't quite sure about it, wouldn't you try to soften me up first? Maybe with a good meal. 
Yeah, you're right. Maybe Willie remembers a play he wrote for my class. I was quite rude about it. Yeah, replaced quite with very rude. Well, surely a criticism made a couple of years ago doesn't apply. I doubt it, too, but two years could turn uh, very rude into terribly rude. Who knows? Hey, don't look so grim over there. I was kidding. Here, I'll get the refills. White wine. A uh, Shirley Temple. You got two hands. You get it. Oh! Michael, this is my sister Nancy. I'm Michael Kagan. Uh, Nancy Maitland. Nancy, would you like a drink? Uh, no, thank you. I'll pass. Well, I'm glad that you two have finally met. Uh, I am, too. Very glad. I could have kicked myself for not asking your name this afternoon. I could have kicked you, too. Let's go in. Look how one extra person makes it look like a tornado struck. Well, it was worth it, I think. Michael was a hit with the whole family. I think uh, Buddy would compare him favorably with uh, Donnie Osmos. Osmond. Whatever. And Nancy. Robert Redford. Uh, what about you? The Wolf Man? Never mind. I'm a harder sell than Nancy and Buddy. Oh, do I detect a little bit of dislike there? Okay. I thought he was downright unpleasant about the possibility of Willie's script being bad. He was only joking. That's what he said. He wasn't joking. Well, listen, if Willie's going to be a writer, he's going to have to get used to some harsh criticism. He didn't have to go into training tonight. I thought it was a nice evening. I guess so. If you like that sort of thing. Well, here it is. Just remember, it's a first draft. And it needs work, but relax, Willie. How bad could it be? I taught you everything you know. Uh, Michael, why don't you call me when you finish reading the script? It doesn't matter what time. I'll Not be a chance. Suffer. It's good for your art. Now, let me get home. You want me to read this tonight? I better get to it. Oh, well, Michael. Good night. Good night. Good night. Could have stayed around to say good night. Oh, I didn't want to disturb you and Willie. I'll say it now. Good night. Oh, oh, not so fast. The uh, Cassatt exhibit officially opens tomorrow morning. You still want to go see it? Yes, I do. One o'clock in front of the building. Why don't we have lunch first? Going to an exhibit on an empty stomach isn't fair to the artist. Now one o'clock's fine. Oh, l let's go to the exhibit first, and and then we'll see you about lunch. Okay, now I'll say good night. Good night. Good night. Terrific lady. She was liberated long before it became fashionable. Professor? Excuse me, um, I I'm in your class. I wanted to tell you after the lecture this morning, but you left so quickly. Uh, I think you're the best teacher I ever had. I, I think your class is sensational. Thank you. I hope it shows up in your work. <laughs> me too. Uh, well, bye. Bye. Now that is what I call a meteoric rise to stardom. What, three weeks on the faculty and already it's Michael Kagan for president. She's after my body. How about you? Give me three weeks, I'll let you know. Now, Willie said you were an extraordinary teacher. Oh, Willie's prejudiced. Not very. You hungry? How about lunch? There's a little Greek place I know. It's not far from here. Lead the way. I kept away from talking about it for so long that I can only assume you didn't think it was very good. Willie's script? Mm-hmm. Oh, I haven't read it. Oh. I was going to. But after I spoke to you, I was very distracted. 
want to start it without giving my full attention. What? And before you say another word, you were the cause of the distraction. Well, maybe I shouldn't go to lunch. You could read it now. It's too late. I'm already distracted. Excuse the mess. A little Greek place, you know? Well, I'm Greek, and it's a little place I know. And if you really want lunch, I'll whip something up. Oh, start whipping. Your command is my wish. Watch your step. Hey, do you have any among your etchings? I donated them all to a museum. Too uh, ostentatious for my lifestyle. Written by, directed by? Oh, Renaissance man. And a uh, pretty fair lunch whipper upper, too. Oh, I'm hungry. Tell me about your play. Oh, there's not much to tell. Usual first play problems. I loved it, the critics hated it, and the audiences stayed away. Oh, rotten. Oh, not really. Actually, I was pretty lucky. I got it produced, got to see it on stage, and uh, I learned a lot from it. Also, I had something to come back to, my true love. Which is? Teaching. It must be awfully nice to know what a true love is. I'm always wondering, uh, should I be in school? Am I neglecting my son? You know, is law it and will I be any good at it? Ah, you just need someone to tell you you're terrific and that you do everything perfectly. you could uh, help me straighten up this place. When do I start? Right after lunch. <laughs> That's what you were doing the last time I saw you. It's my third one. You can't be eating for two, so what is it? I think it's called anxiety. You haven't heard from Michael? No. I called, but there was no answer. Maybe he has glasses. Why don't you try again? You're too young to lose your waistline. Someone actually lives here now. Want to get that? Nope. The one? No. I just don't feel like talking to anyone but you. That's an admirable quality. Do you know that I can make it to the phone from the shower in 10 seconds flat, lather and all? I have to remember that. Uh huh. I think I'll just go over there and wait. Oh, honey, don't. Wait till he calls. He might get home tired. Oh, no, it's all right, Mom. I always drop by whenever I want to in the old days. <laughs> I'll see you later, Emily. Post. Emily was right. Wish me luck. Willie! 
Hiya, Michael. Come on in. Thank you. I was gonna call you. Oh, yeah? Let's talk over coffee. <laughs> that doesn't sound very good. I beg your pardon. I make great coffee. You can have any kind you like as long as it's Turkish. I had a great time last night. It was very nice seeing your family again. Well, they were happy to see you, Michael. I'm especially glad you got a chance to meet my sister Nancy. I just passed her in the street. She must have told you that you two were at the same school. Oh, right, yeah, she did. And I'm always available for attractive luncheon companions. Oh, well, my mother's going to school, too. <laughs> She's in the music department. She's trying to get a teaching degree. Buddy's the next one. I'm the only educational holdout. <laughs> Say, Michael, if you're looking for a way to let me down easy. Willie, I don't need to look for ways. That's part of my skill as a teacher. Beat up on them, but don't leave any marks. You remember. <laughs> I read it. You put a lot of work into it, right? Right. But it's still a first try. The real work's ahead of you. Oh, I know there's a lot of work left to do on it. I told you it was just first draft. Oh, I know you told me. But I don't think you believed it. What, are you telling me I have to start all over from scratch? No, I'm not saying that. It's an interesting situation. It's well developed. You got some good dialogue. But the transitions from scene to scene are clumsy. Okay. Well, that can be fixed. Also, Willie, there are large parts of it that I just don't find believable. Well, tell me. The boy. I just don't believe him. Well, if you don't believe in the boy, then there's not much left. Well, what is the problem? Look, you set up a 14-year-old kid. A loner who spends most of his life going to the movies because he finds the real world too tough for him. Then you introduce him to an old man, and all of a sudden, they become fast friends. Why? Why what? Why do they become fast friends? What's so special for either of them? If I were the kid you wrote about, I'd tell the old man to get lost. Mind your own business. The boy wants to live in the real world. Now, for him, the old man is a safe person to begin with. Now, the closer the two of them get, the harder it becomes for the boy to let go of his old way of being. Now, that's the conflict for the old man. I'm sorry, Willie. I just don't believe it. Well, I believed it when I wrote it. Well, that's all very nice, but your job is to make me believe it, and I don't. What was inside your head when you were writing it probably all seemed glorious. It always does. But it's what ends up on the paper that counts, and what you gave me to read just misses. What about the end? The end. After 118 pages, it ends up with a kid walking off into the sunset with the old man. So what? Uh, hey, Michael. Willie. You were never one of those students who wanted me to pull punches. No? Well, then go ahead and tell me straight out. Just forget the technical stuff, because I can learn that, and you know it. Yes, you can. But what you're telling me is you can't learn talent, right? Willie, I know you. I know you won't settle for mediocrity. There are lots of ways to function creatively. Bashing away at a typewriter is only one of them. Those who can do, and those who can't shouldn't even try. You always used to say that. Willie, uh, I didn't mean to hurt you. I know. But you figure I'll be better off if I hear the truth. Willie. Thanks, Michael.
trying to, anyway. All right, all right. The book away. It's not a book. It isn't even very interesting. I'm worried about Willie. Well, it's only about 12 o'clock. He's 20 years old. He's probably just out somewhere. He went over to Michael's apartment at 4 in the afternoon. Nobody's heard a word from him since. So they finished their talk, went out, had dinner, went to a movie? He went to see him to talk about his script. Oh, you're afraid that Mike didn't like it and Willie is wandering around the streets somewhere in despair. Have a little faith, honey. I have plenty of faith. It's Willie who doesn't have any. Well, it's his script. You can't hold his hand. Whatever is going on, he's going to have to take care of himself. I, however. You, however. I wouldn't mind it a bit if you held my hand. What are they about? <laughs> Hello. Good morning. How are you? Fine. Is everything all right? Fine. Good. I want to see you. I thought you'd never ask. Have dinner tonight? And I thought maybe we could uh, take a drive up to Carmel, come back on Sunday. Oh, dinner would be lovely, but uh, uh, tomorrow I'll have to drive to Santa Barbara to pick up my son. You're welcome to come along. Sounds nice. Timmy, right? Two and a half. Uh, hey, why don't we pick him up early? There's a place on the way. It used to race Shetland ponies. He could take a ride. I'll check and see if it's still open. Oh, oh, it is, and he loves it. Good. I'll pick you up around seven. I'll be ready. Hey, I, I have a class this afternoon. Maybe I'll come by and watch you at work. Oh, no, you don't. You're too distracting. Oh, oh, oh. I'll see you at seven. Okay, bye. Hi. I'm from the welcome wagon. How about? Thanks, Mom. No questions asked. Just remember, you know my number, uh, my office hours. I'm available for consultation, diagnosis, or a good hot breakfast. I'll be down in a little while. I think maybe a shower will help. Hello, sweetie. You look terrific. Thanks. So do you. Hey, is Willie in his room? If not, there's a burglar taking a shower. Oh, I'll take my chances. Hey, Willie. Hey. No frontal nudity. It's only your sister. Hi. Mm. <laughs> What's the occasion? It's the best I could come up with on the spur of the moment. Your Rolls Royce will be delivered later. Nancy. Uh, I just want to say thanks. Well, you're very welcome. <coughs> but for what? Michael Kagan. We spent a lot of time together yesterday. In fact, I was on my way from his apartment when I passed you. He's terrific, Willie. We had a good time together. He really seems to like me, and he likes children. Yeah, well, that's great. That's just great. It's just a little ironic. I thought I'd be the one to live happily ever after because of Michael. I guess you haven't talked to him since yesterday. No, I, I did. I talked to him a few minutes ago. Well, then you must have heard the news. Willie Lawrence, rookie writer, has struck out. He didn't mention it. Well, I'm sure you expected some criticism. Sure I did. I, I expected a lot. Just not the kind that I got. He said to me, uh, Willie, I'm sure what was in your head when you were writing seemed glorious, but uh, it's what ends up on paper that counts, and what you've given me to read just misses. Well, if your script needs work, um, I'm, I'm sure Michael would be glad to work on it with you. 
Give yourself a break. I think I've been giving myself too many for too long. Do me a favor, Nancy. I'll, I'll see you later. I just want to sit here and think for a while. Stand back. And remember, there are people in the other offices. So don't try anything funny. Oh, no, no, it's okay. My name's Willie Lawrence. I'm Mr. Lawrence's son. Mr. Lawrence? Yes. Wait a second, I... I... That's me. I've aged a little, but... I swear, that's me. Actually, it's a lovely likeness. You're very photogenic. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me, Mr. Douglas. Lawrence. It's Lawrence. Willie. Willie, yes. Willie Lawrence. I'm so sorry. But these days, a girl can't be too careful, you know? Fact is, the place is empty, except me. I bring my lunch. My father? Oh, he doesn't bring his lunch. But, oh, uh, he should be back momentarily. You won't tell him, will you? Oh, no. I'll tell him that you're really looking after his best interests. Well, if you'll excuse me. <laughs> I, uh, uh, well. <laughs> if you'll excuse me, I'll just have my sandwich. Doesn't look good eating at the desk when they all come back. You understand. Sure. You can wait in here. I trust you. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> Mr. Douglas? Stand back. Uh -huh. There are other people in the offices. Don't try anything funny. Well, you're good to see you. My dad. She's something else. Yeah, haven't figured out what yet. You should have come sooner, you know. We could have had lunch together. Well, I called you. I guess you didn't get the message. Oh, Mr. Douglas. Willie called. He has to see you. I guess she doesn't figure he has to is urgent. Is it? You all right? Dad? What if I said I wanted to go back to school? School? I know it would be hard. I'd have an awful lot of catching up to do. I probably would only be able to work part-time, because I don't stand a chance in hell of getting any sort of scholarship. Oh, Willie, wait a minute. What's going on? I'm scared, I guess. Um, it suddenly occurred to me that I've really boxed myself in. I'm 20 years old, and I've got no recognizable skills. I just figured that it's, uh, Time to learn a trade, as they used to say. Oh, as they used to say. I haven't said that for quite a while, Willie. Really. I know. It's me saying it this time. Well, you better fill me in. Last I heard, you were working very hard at becoming a writer. Until yesterday. Mike Kagan told you the script was no good. Worse than that. He said I'm no good. Has it occurred to you he might be wrong? Oh, well, I was never sure I had any real talent anyway. Dad, I just don't want to get to be 45 years old and still living at home with you supporting me. Well, well if you want to go back to school, of course you should. But if you do, I hope you'll concentrate on uh, writing courses. Uh, if you're concerned about your future, of course, in hotel management won't help. <laughs> Got enough lawyers in the family, that's out. time, but you know, I really do believe you can be a writer. Well, you gave me that script and I was terrified. I didn't know what I'd think. It was very moving, very truthful. I mean, there may be things wrong with it technically, I don't know, but I, I was involved in it. It moved me deeply. 
It got to me, Willie. What if it hadn't been written by your 20-year-old unemployed son? Well, I'd have thought whoever wrote it was going to be a very good writer. But you did write it. So I was very relieved when I read it. I knew that when you were 45, you would be able to support me in a style to which I'm accustomed. I'm looking forward to it. So do whatever you want, but don't stop writing. Dad, thank you. I love what you said. I don't believe you. I just don't think that I can afford to waste any more time. Well, that decision will have to be yours, not mine. Or Michael Kagan's. Established writers is all well and good. There's also a lot to be learned from reading a work in progress. Wouldn't you have liked to have read Hemingway's first draft? Pass his back, Pam. The scenes I'm giving you are just that. A first draft, a work in progress. But still a lot of work needs to be done on the script. Um, who wrote it? It's not important. Well, no, it's just like, you know, I like to know these things because, I mean, it makes it more interesting. Uh, sorry. I want you all to be prepared to discuss where the scenes go off technically. Well, don't we get the shot at the, the writing? We can, but I think I'll have a hard time. Ah, it's a new and daring way of viewing things, huh? No. In fact, you've probably all seen it half a dozen times. Especially the final scene. An old man huddled in an overcoat, going away from us, walking down a lonely street, and all of a sudden a boy comes up to him from out of nowhere, puts his hand into the old man's hand, and they go walking off together. Ugh, corny. It would be in the hands of a less talented writer. But the person who wrote this script has invested it with so much of his own energy, his own kind of truth, that I'll bet it'll never occur to any of you that you've seen or heard it before. Come on, Mr. Kagan, tell us who wrote it. I bet you did. No. It was written by a former student of mine. And if he keeps writing this way, it may end up to be my greatest achievement. In music, the fugue is the mutual pursuit of voices or parts. So far, so good. Describe the order of entries in exposition of the first fugue of Das Wotum Pirati Clavier. That's ridiculous. The well-tempered clavichord. That's even more ridiculous. Ah, uh, back to the order of entries. It is subject, answer, subject, uh, no, wait a minute. Subject, answer, answer, subject. You're a genius. But tell me something. What does all this stuff mean? It has to do with the form used in composition. Oh, Nancy, you're saving my life. Mom, I want to talk to you. Uh, buddy, I really would like to talk to Mom privately. Oh. And don't think I won't remember this when you want me to babysit Timmy next time. I promise I'll make it up to you. This is about Michael Kagan. I think I've heard about as much about Michael Kagan as I care to. You know he demolished Willie when he talked to him about his script. I know, that's fine. And but Willie's gone to your father, talked about going back to school, not writing anymore. Mother, would you just listen to me for a minute? See, I've been seeing Michael. I like him, but I, I went over to his lecture hall today. He, he was talking, and I stood behind the door because I didn't want him to see me. Mom, he was talking about Willie's script. He was saying it was wonderful. I mean, he even handed out Xerox copies of part of it to his class. Are you sure it was Willie's script? Yes. Yeah, the old man, the little boy, the, that whole end scene. He said it was by a former pupil. His greatest achievement. Have you told Willie? No. I don't know what to do. I mean, Michael's picking me up for dinner at 7, and I thought, well, maybe I should talk to him first. I think that's a good idea. Why do you suppose he did it? I thought he was trying to destroy Willie's confidence in himself. Why? I don't know. Whatever you find out, just be very careful about what's said to Willie. 
And by whom? If that's what you're going to wear, we'll never get as far as Santa Barbara. I'll change in a minute. Uh, come on in. Ah, nice room. Suits you. Where's the baby's room? Oh, back there. He's, he's outgrowing it by the hour. <laughs> Michael, um, this afternoon I was listening in the corridor outside your lecture hall at the last part of your class. Oh? How to do? Fine. <laughs> so did Willie from what you were saying. I, I just don't understand why you... Why I didn't tell it to him that way. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just simple... That's pretty good for a kid. Would have done it, but you flattened him. I, I don't understand. Well, you don't have to. It has nothing to do with you. Uh, he's my brother. All right. It's a challenge, Nancy. If they're talented, they accept it. They work harder than ever. They kill themselves to prove I'm wrong. Willie certainly will. It's a foolproof method. Come on, now. Let's get going. Look, it, it may be a foolproof method to you, but as far as Willie's concerned, and, and me too, I, I, I think it's rotten. You want me to go next door, hold Willie's hand, and apologize for being mean to him, right? No, I just, I just think it would help if you gave him a little hope along with the bare knuckles. You think treating him like a child will help? I don't, Nancy. He isn't a child. He's a full-grown man. He just needs some time to think about what I said. I'll bet you by the time we get back from dinner, he'll have pulled himself together. I don't think I can go to dinner and just count on that happening. I guess that's that. It's a bloody shame, Nancy. For Willie. And for you and me. In case you got anything lying around. I'll keep that in mind. What have you been up to? What you see is what there is. Simple household chores. I thought I heard the typewriter. Have you been working? Nancy, look at me. I used to be six foot two. These are my knees I'm standing on. Well, I'm lucky I got these left. I don't want to get into it, but after Michael got through with me, I... I'm sorry. All you wanted was a simple yes or no answer. No, I haven't been working. Well, you know, maybe Michael was just challenging you, trying to get you to work harder. No. No, not a chance. He was telling me not to waste my time. Well, then maybe you can tell me why he was handing out copies of your script to his students and telling him it was the work of a very talented writer. What? That's true. I was there. I saw it. Willie. Hi, Michael. May I come in? Sure. Sit down. No, I can't stay. I just wanted to ask you something. Shoot. Michael, you were the one that told me that I should think about being a writer. Why was that? Because I thought you showed a lot of promise. Well, it appears that I still do. Or else you're playing some terrible trick on your class. No. No? Why did you rip me apart and then tell your class how good my script is? That's exactly what I said to Nancy. I thought you'd do better if you were challenged, if you knew how far you had to go. How far I have to go? You told me that I was a mediocrity and that I was kidding myself. Come on now, Willie. You know my technique. Yes, I know you're tough, but I never thought that you were a killer. 
You made me doubt my own self-worth, Michael. Willie, do you know that out of every 2,000 scripts submitted to producers, maybe, maybe, ten get bought. And out of those ten, maybe one gets produced. So it's tough out there in the real world. I know that. But you ripped me apart. And I think you knew I wouldn't be able to put the pieces back together again. And I think it was deliberate, Michael. Now, come on, Willie. Now, you would never have treated anyone that way before you left here. What happened to you? Well, whatever it was, it's a damn shame. Willie, wait a minute. You know, when I left here and uh, went to New York, I thought I'd never have to see the inside of another classroom as long as I lived. I gave myself two years to write my play. It wasn't just a flop. It was a disaster. And, uh, when it was all over, I knew I might not get another shot. And even if I did, I wouldn't take it. I learned that I don't have it. And suddenly, there you were, 20-year-old kid with that damn script. Well, you sure did some job on me. Yeah, I didn't mean to. I guess you just got it for everything. You know, Willie, it's not that I don't like teaching, I do. It's just that I hate knowing that's all I can 